All right, enough talk. Let's process some images and use our Python knowledge. Now, you might be thinking that image processing is something that you can do on your machine using something like Photoshop, even using a simple editing software. But where this tool really shines is when we have to process hundreds, thousands of images. You can do things really, really fast with Python. So let's get started with this. I've actually attached to this lesson a Pokedex for you. And this Pokedex has all these cute little Pokemons. We have Bulbazar, we have Charmander, we have Pikachu, we have Squirtle. It's great. They're all extremely cute. And by the way, a little bonus just for taking this course. No other course is going to teach you this. Get ready for it. You ready? Bulbazar, original name in Japanese is Fushigidane. Charmander? Well, Charmander is Hitokage. And then Pikachu, well, Pikachu is just Pikachu. And then Squirtle is Zenigame. There you go. Free Japanese lesson. Bonus for this Python course. Yes, this is that good of a course. All right, let's get back to some serious stuff. We have these images. Let's see what we can do with them. I'm going to have an image.py file so you can just create this on your own. And I'm using Sublime Text here in my command prompt, but you can use whatever you want. And what I'm about to show you is something that, remember, you can always reference in the official documentation. When learning a library, there's nothing better than the official documentation, right? And we see over here that the first thing we need to do is to actually import the module just like this. So let's go back here and say from pill import image. So now we can do something pretty exciting. The first thing we can do is say image equals image that we've imported and just simply say open. Now in here, we just give it a file path that we want to open. In our case, let's open up Pikachu.jpg. So I'm going to say dot slash, which means current directory. And remember, we're in the image playground directory. And I want to go inside of the Pokedex folder. So I'm going to say Pokedex and say slash Pikachu. Make sure I spell Pikachu right here. Dot JPEG. And let's just print the image here to see what we get. I'm going to save and run this file. So I'm going to say Python 3 and run the image.py file images.py file, because that's the name. There you go. We get an object here. You see, it's a pill object. It's a JPEG image plugin, JPEG image file. And it tells me exactly what it is. So we've converted or opened up this JPEG into an image object that pillow gives us that we can now manipulate. So what can we do here? Well, first, let's just see the image dot format. And this property is going to say, hey, what is image format? Image format, it's a JPEG because, well, it's a JPEG. That's awesome. So we get different properties here. What about size? Can you tell us about the size? Well, yep. The size of the image is 640 by 640. Awesome. That's good. We get some information. What if we do mode here? What does mode do? Let's see. Ah, we see that the coloring is in RGB. So that's red, green, blue. All right, awesome. Let's clear the console here. There you go. Now remember, we're able to figure out what kind of functions, methods, properties, and attributes this image has by doing the dir command, right? So if I just remove this, and do dir over the image. We get, well, all the things that this image has given to us. And again, this is something that we can check on the documentation websites as well. Okay, but let's do something even more exciting. You know what I want to do? I want to be able to maybe add some filters, maybe blur things in here. Well, 
pillow gives us this image filter that we can now filter the image with. So how can we use it? Well, we can now have a filtered image and this filter image is going to equal the image that we've grabbed and we're going to say dot filter and in here give it the image filter with some options. So here we can do different things. Let's do blur here. So capital blur. So now it's going to apply a filter of blurring. So let's see what happens if I do this. I'm going to instead of printing, I'm actually going to say image dot save. And this is going to save the filtered image. So let's do filtered image dot save and give it, let's call it blur comma, and then the extension that we want to save it in. Let's just do PNG here. We'll change it to a PNG file like this. And if I run this, look at that. We have a new file blur.png here. If I click on it, Pikachu is all blurred up. You can see the original image right here, then the blurred image. How cool is that? So let's do that again. Let's do something else. Let's do uh, maybe smooth, which is another filter that we can do. If I run this again, all right, we see that the image is now well, you can't really tell, but it's smoother. That's a filter that usually works better with landscape images. We can also do something like sharpen. And again, you can read the documentation to see different filterings that we can do. But let's check this one out as well. We got the original and then the sharpened one. There you go. There's a bit of a notice. Pikachu is looking very, very sharp. Now, the reason that I've converted this into a PNG is because PNG supports these image filters. So you might get an error if you actually keep it as a JPEG. And you know what? While we're at it, let me show you another thing that we can do. So instead of this filter image, we can actually do something called convert. And this converts the image to different formats. So one of the formats that we can actually do is something called grayscale, which is with a capital L. So when I do convert like this, this image, and let's rename it to gray.png. If I run this, my gray.png, oop, Pikachu is in black and white. So you can also convert images to different formats. So remember we had the RGB, red, green, blue format, there's different formats that you can convert images to, but this one looks pretty cool. We've just grayed out Pikachu. Now, this is just one picture that we've worked with, but the power and what I'm going to show you in the upcoming videos is how we can apply, let's say a function like this to hundreds and thousands and millions of images if we want and process them really fast. But for now, I think this is enough. You can experiment and try different converts and try different image filters on your own. And we're going to learn some more in the next video.